Welcome to this presentation on the nuclear Doppler effect. The nuclear Doppler effect is one of the most important feedback effects in nuclear reactor control. My name is Jan Leen Kloosterman and I work at the Faculty of Applied Sciences of Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. The nuclear Doppler effect finds its origin in the nuclear resonance structure of the heavy nuclides. Here you see the uranium-238 capture cross-section as a function of energy. This cross-section shows strong resonances with high cross-section values in the peaks and low values in between. If a neutron with energy that matches the energy of a resonance peak collides with a uranium-238 nuclide, it has a very high probability to be captured, while a neutron with just a little bit lower energy or a little bit higher energy experiences a much lower capture probability. The lowest lying resonance of uranium-238 has its peak value at 6.67 electron volt. This resonance will be used in the examples further on. Now imagine a neutron colliding with a uranium-238 nucleus. If the energy of the neutron is 6.7 electron volt, which equals just the energy of the first resonance of uranium-238, it can easily be absorbed by the uranium, indicated here with the red arrow. If, however, the energy of the neutron is only a little bit higher, say 6.8 electron volt, there is a mismatch between the neutron energy and the resonance peak, and the neutron can easily pass the uranium nucleus without being absorbed, indicated here by the blue arrow. Now imagine a neutron with a little bit lower energy than the resonance peak energy, say 6.6 electron volt, but with a uranium-238 nucleus moving towards the neutron. In this case, the relative velocity between the neutron and the target nucleus can be such that the effective kinetic energy of the neutron is 6.7 electron volt, and also in this case, the neutron can easily be absorbed by the uranium-238 nucleus. The same holds, of course, when the neutron has a little bit higher energy than the resonance peak energy, say 6.8 electron volt, but with the target nucleus moving away from the neutron. Again, the relative velocity between the neutron and the nucleus is then such that the effective kinetic energy matches the 6.7 electron volt of the first resonance of uranium-238. And also in this case, the neutron will, can easily be absorbed by the uranium nucleus. So from this slide we can conclude that vibrating nuclides moving towards and backwards from the neutron can increase the absorption rate of neutrons with a little bit lower energy than the resonance peak energy and of neutrons with a little bit higher energy than the resonance peak energy. This effect leads to an effective broadening of resonances. Here I've plotted the uranium-238 capsule resonance at 6.67 electron volt at a temperature of 600 Kelvin. If the temperature of the fuel increases, the effective resonance broadens a bit. The green line in this plot, which is the same resonance but at the temperature of 900 Kelvin, shows a little bit lower value for the peak energy and a little bit higher value in the wings of the resonance. And the higher the temperature of the fuel, the stronger this effect. The red line here shows the resonance at a temperature of 1200 K. And 1500 K. And 1800 K. Now we recall a result from a previous lecture. It's about elastic scattering of neutrons with the target nucleus. If we have a neutron 
With energy E, it can scatter to any energy between alpha E and E with equal probability. But it cannot scatter to energy below alpha E. Here, alpha is a ratio of A minus 1 and A plus 1 squared, with capital A being the mass of the target nucleus expressed in neutron mass. Let's see how this works out in practice. This formula says that a neutron with energy E can scatter with equal probability to any energy between alpha E and E. But it cannot scatter to energy below alpha E. If the target nu nucleus is lighter, the energy range of the scatter event becomes larger. Hydrogen, for example, has an alpha value of zero and the scatter energy range is the whole interval from E till zero. But if we have a heavy nuclide, uranium for example, the energy range over which a neutron can scatter becomes very small, and a neutron needs many collisions to slow down from the fast energy range till the thermal energy range. We will use this result to explain the nuclear Doppler effect. Imagine we have a heavy nuclide with a potential scatter cross-section of 5 bar, indicated here with the green bar. If a neutron at energy E scatters with the moderator nuclide, it can scatter to any energy between alpha E and E, with equal probability, and the total energy range of the scatter event is 1 minus alpha times E as indicated in the figure. Now imagine that the heavy nuclide has a resonance with a peak value of 100 barn and an energy width of delta E. We can now easily calculate the probability for a neutron to be absorbed in the resonance. This probability is the width of the resonance delta E divided by the total energy range of the scatter event, 1 minus alpha times E times the probability for the neutron to be absorbed in the resonance, which is the ratio of the absorption cross-section and the total cross-section at the energy of the resonance. This ratio of cross-sections, in this case, equals 100 divided by 105, which is equal to 0.95 as shown on the slide. Now imagine that the temperature of the fuel increases and that the resonance cross-section of the nuclide broadens. Here we've assumed that the peak value reduces with a factor of 2 and that the width of the resonance increases with a factor of 2, such that the total area under the resonance does not change. Now the absorption probability for the broadened resonance is again the width of the resonance divided by the energy range of the scatter event, which is 2 times delta E divided by 1 minus alpha times E, multiplied by the probability to be absorbed in the resonance, which is the ratio of the absorption cross-section and the total cross-section at the energy of the resonance. This ratio is now 50 divided by 55, which equals 0.9 and the resulting absorption probability for a neutron becomes 1.8 times delta E divided by 1 minus alpha times E, as shown on the slide. It can be seen that the probability for neutron absorption in the broad resonance is almost twice as large as for the case of the narrow resonance. The ratio is 1.9. This means that a higher temperature leads to broader resonances of the nuclides and to more resonance absorption of neutrons. There is another interesting observation to make if we increase the scatter cross-section per absorber atom. On the slide I've shown a scatter cross-section per absorber atom of 40 barn instead of just 5 used in the previous slide. In practice, we can achieve this by increasing the moderator to fuel ratio in the reactor core. Now the absorption 
probability for a neutron at the resonance energy is again the ratio of the absorption cross-section and the total cross-section at that energy, which in case of the narrow resonance equals 100 divided by 140 barn, and in case of the broad resonance equals 50 divided by 90 barn. These ratios are smaller than on the previous slide, from which we can already draw an important conclusion, namely that the addition of a scattered nuclide to the fuel decreases the resonance absorption rate of neutrons. If we have, for example, uranium homogeneously mixed in graphite, adding more graphite would reduce the resonance absorption rate and thus increase the resonance escape probability. This has an important implication for the safe control of nuclear reactors with a coolant that acts as a moderator as well. An important class of such reactor types is a light water cooled nuclear reactor. If the temperature of the water in these reactors increases, the density decreases and the scatter cross section per fuel nuclide decreases. This leads to extra absorption of neutrons in the resonance of the fuel. If fuel contains much more uranium-238 than uranium-235, such that the increase of the neutron capture rate is larger than the increase of the fission rate, this leads to a decrease of the reactivity of the fuel. This is a very important feedback mechanism in light water reactors. But there is another important effect. The ratio of the absorption probability for the broad resonance and for the narrow resonance is now 1.1 divided by 0.7, which equals 1.6. This value is considerably lower than the value of 1.9 shown before for the case of a scatter cross section per absorber atom of 5 barn. From this we can conclude that the reactivity feedback coefficient due to the nuclear Doppler effect reduces when the scatter cross section per absorber atom increases. A larger scatter cross section per absorber atom can be achieved by increasing the moderator to fuel ratio in the reactor core. We can finalize this presentation with a number of conclusions. First, due to the thermal energy, atoms vibrate. The higher the temperature of atoms, the higher the vibration energy and the higher the velocity of atoms. Secondly, the cross sections of heavy nuclides show resonances with energy width comparable to the thermal motion of the atom itself. Third, neutrons with energy just below or just above the resonance peak energy of a nuclide will be easier absorbed when the atom moves faster. And fourth, when the fuel contains sufficient uranium-238, such that the Doppler effect of the capture resonances exceeds the Doppler effect of the fission resonances in the fuel, an increase of the fuel temperature leads to more neutron capture and to a declining fission chain reaction. This is a very important conclusion for the safe control and operation of nuclear reactors, because it means that if the fuel temperature increases, the fission chain reaction will die out automatically. The nuclear Doppler effect is therefore a very important negative feedback effect that will shut down a nuclear reactor automatically if something goes wrong. Thank you for your attention, and if you have further questions, please contact us at one of the websites shown here.